here I am waving at the traffic. So I just, I'm always singing a little song, a tune to try and keep myself going. And... Can't think of saying us. <laughs> if anyone thinks it's fun to be walking around with your name on yourself, you've got another thing coming. Yeah, there's never been a time like this. It takes a lot of time, effort and courage to run for public office. And to win, a little bit of luck helps. An independent hasn't been elected to represent Braddon in the lower house of the state parliament for over 100 years. Tasmanians are heading to the ballot box early for the second time in a row. This time around, there are a lot more seats on offer across the five electorates. We're going from 25 seats to 35 seats, and that means that the required majority for the major parties seeking government is going to be 18 seats. The election was called by Liberal Premier Jeremy Rockliffe after two of his party members defected to the crossbench. Minority government is destabilising, it destroys confidence, and it is bad for our state and it is bad for Tasmanians. I think it's very unlikely that either of the major parties will achieve that majority. And in fact, it's likely, should the Liberals be able to form government, that they will be in a trickier position than they were before the election. They need to negotiate not just with a few independents, but perhaps across the board, uh, ex-Labor, Liberal, ex-Liberal, um, independents, and also potentially Jackie Lambie Network members as well. Yeah, well, her name's all over the hat. Her name's all over the <laughs> Jackie shops here, doesn't she? Oh, of course she does. <laughs> and now Miriam's going to... The Jackie <laughs> Lambie yeah. Network is running candidates in all but one of the electorates. Braddon, in the state's north, is considered one of the party's best shots. Jackie lives nearby, obviously, so that's really helpful. Uh, she'll come down and she'll spend a couple of hours with us waving flags at the end of a long day. Uh, it's a bit like walking with a celebrity. <laughs> like, the amount of people who come over and go, oh, can I have a photo? <laughs> it's amazing. So it's good for you. <laughs> well, I, I get to be a photographer for a day. <laughs> Senator Lambie isn't on the ballot paper, but her face and her influence is everywhere. She's the leader, right, so we, you know, we're going to be listening to her. Uh, she's been in here for 10 years now, or close to, you know, so she's got some experience behind her. We should be listening. But she's not, she's not going to be um, the autocratic, hardcore you know, personality. Experts believe the Lambie network could win a number of crucial seats, which is concerning to the major parties. The Tasmanian Liberals registered the domain name lambienetwork.com. The Lambie network has not released a single policy. You can't vote for Jackie Lambie. They'll plunge Tasmania back into minority government. So definitely with the Lambie network, it's all about values. So we haven't already got pre-decided policies or you know, specific areas. And that's, to me, that's true democracy. Here we are representing the people. That's one of the things that really matter. Yeah. Also running in Braddon is Latrobe Mayor Peter Freshney. I guess most of these people here would be worried about what's happening in the Trove, what's going to happen in the Trove, and what yeah. the priorities are for the Trove, I guess. Been a mayor for, um, in my 10th year. Been a councillor for nearly 13 years. And how, as to how my life could change if I were elected, in some ways, uh, it might be a little bit simpler in that I treat the, the mayor's role as a full-time job and my, my work is a full-time job, so... He's one of dozens of independent candidates in this election. I've never been a member of a party and never will be, and I, I've made that clear. I just... The premise that you will toe the party line, that you will vote along party uh, lines, and it just doesn't sit comfortably with me. One, two, three. Hi, I'm Sue Hickey, your independent candidate for Clark, and I want to talk to you about transport. This is the former Lord Mayor of Hobart, an ex-Liberal MP's second time running as an independent. And I cried, cried for you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She says she was pushed out by the Liberals after publicly criticising the party. It was not my decision. I was told quite categorically by the Liberal Premier. He came to my house. He said that basically there was no support for me to stay with the Liberal Party. And so effectively that was sacking me. Having lost her seat in 2021, she says she has unfinished business. This is, this is a once in a generation chance to fix the next few generations. We've got to address all of the crime, the poverty and the dysfunction that is going on. This is not a lock 
for the major parties, there will have to be some negotiation and bargaining. Tasmanians have had a bloody gutful over your stadium and you can stick it up your bum! Last year, the Tasmanian Liberal government signed a controversial deal with the AFL in order to secure a team licence, which included building a new stadium in Hobart at an estimated cost of $750 million. One of the issues that is very prominent, at least for the South, is the proposed AFL stadium at Macquarie Point. And of course, that issue is potentially alienating for Northern voters. There's a lot of people saying, I need a home, I need medical. Why am I spending a three quarters of a billion dollars on a stadium? However, none of the candidates we spoke to say any one issue will either win their support or see them actively disrupt the government. I'm open to anything and everything. As I say, I'd much rather see 35 members representing Tasmania than representing parties. I give a commitment to the people of Tasmania that I will not be destabilising the government of their choice. I'll be working with them to perfect and make sure that the pledges they make are upheld. If Saturday goes the way many are predicting, independents and minor party candidates could hold significant power as part of a broad coalition. We haven't seen this situation in Australia before. I suppose Tasmania is leading the charge in this respect, it's giving us an entree into what this might look like, the, the kind of coalition governments that we more typically associate with um, European politics. I hope you win it. Thank you, darling.